So what's actually happening now? Well, Rishi Sunak has just appeared only six hours ago in front of the country, the nation, and he's just given a speech that he's going to be giving the police some emergency powers, claiming that he's going to reduce rights even further when none of the acts that he's even made so far have reduced rights any further because the wording of them... Um, purports that you're not claiming any rights um, it doesn't suggest that you're using or claiming any rights in that act um, when you are using or claiming a right then the new act can public order act can't apply the wording of it is to mislead you that you're not using a right and that you're not claiming one and or that there isn't one to claim when there is that's a trick but what I find well it's not really amusing but what I noticed about this is I actually think Rishi Sunak really is in a, is in a daze. I mean, to bring order to our streets. He's, tr he's, he's, he's like a, a ghost. In this speech, he's pretending to, well, he, he's, he's just, he's got no pulse. He's just, doo. He's literally sat there, very, 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 very calm, staring forward into space and coming out with the words, and now I'm going to do this. But yet, um, I think he's in disbelief of what is actually happening in France, in England. I think he's absolutely in absolute... Um, he just can't believe it. I just don't think he can actually believe what's happening. And it's, I don't think that it's the people to blame anything to do with the people or, or really it, the protests are at fault. They've been lying about our rights for a long time and they've been writing acts of law to trick and mislead us just like they've been publishing misleading guidance on their websites about taxation. All their companies that they've sold off through Cameron and other... Um, government officials, and when I say they, I mean the corporate handshake circle, they're giving out, when you ring Royal Mail, if you're a registered charity, press three, as if if you're not a registered charity, they don't want to talk to you and there's no button to press because you wouldn't be claiming anything or doing anything if you weren't a registered tri charity, but registered for what? You don't need to be registered if you're under a certain threshold, if you're a Group 9 body, I challenged the Royal Mail on this, and he said, oh, we recognise all bodies. I'm challenging. It, 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 it's misleading. And then all the companies don't want to trade with you if you haven't got a VAT number. They've raked, and, not on, and the thing is, the political campaigns are the ones where you can use influence through adverts to beat these people. You can use influence through advertisements to beat these people and win get them out of government, get someone else in who's not going to rig the law, rig the tax rules, um, give subliminal misguidance in their websites and in their rules. And the, I think the thing that has really cut through his spirit like a, uh, and left him as this kind of pale... I'm really sensing the um, Indiana Jones uh, movie now, you know, like the Temple of Doom, you know, with the young um, Maharaja who's just, you know, he, he's um, possessed, his spirit's just gone. I think Sunak's spirit is gone now and it's just kind of like a pale shadow. He's kind of like, he's he gives this in like a complete and total Maharaja trance. I think he's now in complete possession uh, or he's under some sort of spirit possession I don't know how you want to read that or how I mean it but I would say that I mean it like complete corporate Black Rock Vanguard um, ownership of his body, his bodily presence on this earth um, his physical manifestation his soul um, you know, his body, his soul, he connects to the planet with the soul is this, the best way to, to describe the soul is the, like, you know, your soul on your foot when you make contact with the floor, the spirit can rise and fall. The soul is where 
your terminal points with the earth your body lives and grows but in order to interact with the world around you you've got you know terminal points which is really your senses you know the senses um how you sense the world i think his soul is you know his soul's gone to corporate money materialism the economy financial numbers um and I, what I think that has done it, I don't even think that, you know, I'm not claiming um, Bankcop.biz had got anything to do with it or even Stop You, Les, or any of these other protesters. Look, judging by this eight hours ago, I think that that um, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. interview with that woman, that I, I've just put it actually on my website page at the top video, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. just did an interview with a woman who has been, she teaches children and does a children's gym to exercise. And that interview, absolutely and completely, you know Robert F. Kennedy says that he wants to tear the CIA into a thousand pieces and scatter it into the wind? Robert F. Kennedy has just done this interview with a woman on his YouTube channel they're saying that John, John, uh, John Peterson um, made a video the other day that got banned on YouTube. Um, I'm going to watch it. I mean, I haven't seen it yet, but it's meant to be quite um, profound. But what Robert F. Kennedy did on his presidential video, it's his presidential candidate video. So really, they shouldn't... Well, I watched it. So, you know, I don't think they can censor it, really, because um, it was all fact. Um, they've completely... They, what Robert F. Kennedy did in that interview is essentially he completely and totally, in quite kind of like easy to understand terms, completely revealed the full evil extent of absolute widespread, rooted and branched evil and corruption of the entire network of corporate entities and organizations who have been buying everything from us setting all their policies which they get us to sign our souls away i am not a robot i am not a robot no i'm not a robot but you've got to tick the box to prove you're not a robot i'm actually a human with a soul and a spirit but no when you tick this box anything you use of theirs agree consent accept you cannot interact with them or engage with them they don't want to speak to you or listen to you until you've agreed to their policy first and then they don't speak to you or listen to you and what they've done to these small businesses and these people has it, it cracks the facade the, 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 what Russell Brand has been talking about, this politeness, this fake kindness. Oh, we're doing it for the people, for safety. The police need to keep us safe. Well, when they say us safe, the police need to keep the politicians safe. The police need to keep my safe safe. The police need to keep my money safe. The police need to keep... Um, our mansions safe and our yachts and our Baroness Moon's M yacht. We need the police to keep corporate control because we've gained control through policies which are frankly evil to the spirit and soul of humans. And now they're using advertisements to mock, annoy, harass, influence, um, distract jeer people and you can't block or skip them um you know the full extent of the the pinnacle of human intelligence and learning you know what has made the hadron collider made helicopters fly got into space has been used against the individual and you know, even when my dad's using, you know, he, he talks to the phone, you know, he's like, you know, he, he, he's asking the phone questions, you know, bring me up a website with this or that. And it's like, um, I found this on the web. I found this on the web. And the really, really annoying and inhuman voice. Oh, I found this on the web. 
What it does that is it's threatening and intimidating you that you know anything that you say or do or speak out loud, any file or image on your phone is the web. And anything you do now, they're going to find it and they're going to know about it. There's nothing you can do or say in any room, in any conversation, anywhere. I found this on the web. I found this on the web. Everything you're planning, everything you dream of, everything, anyone that you would like to meet or any place you would like to go, they know and they get, make you sign a policy so they're allowed to know and they can even profit from this and predict. And the worst thing is that, you know, they're studying us. What they're doing is, if you went back in time to the 1920s or 1930s, which is everyone's saying is this golden age, you know, of like you know, the heartbeat program with a local police officer and so forth in the village. If you did what that what these people are doing now you would be arrested if you walk around with a notepad and when people were going into shops and buying things and you followed them and you took notes oh this guy's just bought a uh, three loaves of bread and then you know you follow him out of the shop down the street goes into the bakers and you know buys three buns and writing it all down and he goes oh he likes red jackets he's not too keen on black ones you know you're writing all this information down in a notepad right the police can take notes and investigate if they suspect a crime. But these people are investigating us, investigating everything about us. Who is he dating? What type of women does he like? How does he respond to this when I make the app a bit annoying and change the function of it? So he's got, a, you know, it was really easy to use and now I've made it so he's got to move his thumb to the top of the app to close the app. He doesn't like that anymore. He's stamping his foot like a rabbit, you know, moving the room around. But I've made him do it and now he's complaining. But ha, ha, I, I control the company, you know. Um, I thought the phone was customizable. Well, not anymore. You know, you know I'll, I'll make you do this. I'll make you do that, you know. One minute the rabbit's going for its pellets in a red box and now Rishi makes it go for the rabbit pellets in a yellow box um, whether you like it or not how did it get them to get onto them in the first place oh can we get the customizable um, you know come, it's all customizable you can do what you want nothing is customizable anymore they're designing it all and changing it from the back end and you ain't get any option we whatever they're doing now if they did this in the 1920s, they would be arrested for stalking. There's absolutely no doubt about it. And I believe it amounts to stalking. Any police chief superintendent in this country who has got any integrity, any honour, any soul of a human, uh, no matter how many accidents or dead bodies they witnessed, you know, of, of life of a human soul. If they don't think that what these corporate entities are doing is stalking us, then I think they're blind and stupid. It's stalking. We're being stalked. It's not normal. It's odd. It is weird. If that behavior was done by an individual, not a corporate massive entity, uh, even 30 or 40 years ago, the person walking around taking the information down of that nature about these people would immediately be arrested for stalking. Google, YouTube, and how they're getting away with it is the policy. You agree to it. You agree to everything. Before, they've got this thing called civil law, and they think that regardless of what laws there are in the realm of England, because they're a business and a corporate entity, it's house rules, and they can make you agree to absolutely anything, but yet the law does not permit them to. You must comply with state and federal law. Well, state and federal law, firstly, gives rights. And those companies can only exist because they've got permission to exist under our um, statute laws uh, and liberty, freedoms and liberties of the realm. You know, it, it's amazing there are any employment um, laws anymore. And they only want those so they can keep people working. You know, it, 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 
all these websites have to comply with state and federal law. We will comply with state, federal, and foreign laws. All of them. But they're not. They're ch what what they've done is when who's when YouTube when a when YouTube when a complaint is triggered on YouTube. When a copyright claim is triggered, who's the claimant? It says Warner Brothers is claiming against you. Now you would have to go to court when Warner Brothers triggers a claim that you have copied their material and you're using it. They're claiming against you. Now that means they want to take you to court. Now instead of going to court, YouTube is saying, "Oh, you know, this is gonna. There's a hell of a lot of cases here. What we'll do is." On the basis of the civil procedure rules that, you know, these matters can be dealt with, you know, if you can come to agreements, we can deal with them out of court. They're setting up a facility so it can look for these copyright claims and um, act. But it's acting through powers in law because they've raised a claim against you. They've claimed by identifying you are using their material, they are then writing to you through YouTube and claiming that's the claim. They're the claimant, then you have to respond to them. You're the respondent. They're saving you the trouble of going to court because they're letting YouTube deal with it. But the only reason that they can take the material down is because they're using the law. They've entered into legal proceedings and are executing powers to be able to take the material down or raise a action whereby they will collect the revenue on it, not through their policy, through law. Because the law says that they've got the right to do it. So how, do, how can you do things like this? Because it's the law. And because you are making a claim that someone broke the law. Now, I can guarantee that if you get a copyright strike against you, Warner Brothers is a claimant and they can only use law to correct it because they've made a claim in law. That means that if YouTube claim that you broke one of their policy clauses, even if it's not legislation or the law of America or any other country, they are making a claim and they are the claimant and you then are asked to respond and make a response. Now, they're doing this thing whereby we can sort this. Well, don't worry, you know, I won't take you to court. He's making a claim against you, but he's saying, I'm not going to take you to court because I've got this platform which will sort it all out for us. It's got a convenient system so you can respond, make a legal reply. Oh, I'm replying. You're giving me a, you're giving me a application to make a legal response to your claim. Is that what it is? That's what it is. So what in my legal response, your claim is invalid. It's not valid. So I'm sorry, but we haven't been able to mediate with the system that you've set up. So I'm afraid you will have to take me to court because I'm, I don't agree with this. So you'll have to go fully through with it. Oh, no, it, it actually, seeing as though I've got a big um, battalion um, with an armor-plated, um, you know, headquarters in San Bruno, um, actually, um, I'm just going to take your stuff and stick it on the shelf and, you know, do that's it you know um i'm not going to follow through with this yes but the powers you've been given to take the things is because you've raised a claim and identified a violation and you are then have the right to execute powers in pursuit of it because you were only given those powers through the law and I don't agree with that you're right. So, you know, take me to court, you know, and I'll have my things back until, you know, innocent until proven guilty or by a jury. So this is the thing. What they're doing is they're raising loads of claims and then they're shelving them. And because they've got big muscles and big flexi arms and big computer system, they're just sticking them in the shelf and shutting them away. But what they've done is, is initiated a legal process. 
And if you find in the civil procedure rules, it says, you know, of all parties made the full efforts to sell this, you know, out of court without wasting court time. Well, that's why they built the platform. But when you don't come to an agreement, when you disagree with them, then it needs a judgment in a court. And you're not getting that, particularly when all the responses you gave as respondent have also been taken from you and locked away. So, you know, all right then, well, you've just entered into legal proceedings with me to settle out of court. I made a legal response, um, you know, in this control panel, and then you said, I don't agree with you, and then you shut it down. So, you know, where, where's the where, where's my legal response? You know, and even if I did go to court, I, I don't have, what evidence am I going to give? In fact, I can't even log in. There's actually, there's hardly any evidence that there even was a channel other than, you know, if the court tried to put the early, you know, this channel has been removed for violating our policy. All oh, right, well, you know, well, you know, well, you know, where are the legal, um, you know, what did he say to him? Well, I can't show you that because they've taken away my legal representations. I think that's illegal. I'm quite sure that if, if they, the, you, the, you, the current prosecution service cannot seize the defence material. I can guarantee you that in civil proceedings, right, you can't have your representation seized from you because you can't use it. It would be almost like the witness um, giving a statement uh, and about to read it out, but then someone takes it off them so they can't read it. Um, and, you know, I even know that in America, in some of these um, proceedings in in, in local government in America, um, there was a girl who was swearing, you know, and she's like, you know, you can't censor my speech. And, and you know, the I think it was the mayor or someone, the chairman of the council, um, I think it was Colorado possibly, um, you know, he's like, yeah, I know I can't censor your speech. So he had to let her swear. So, you know, it, it, apparently they can say what they want in America as well, particularly when they're in government, when it's political, you know, um, it's illegal. All A lot of the charity stuff's illegal as well. The way they inform you of things, like on Royal Mail, I've I, I've never had as much mail go missing. In fact, I've I sent a subpoena to YouTube Ingl office in London, the YouTube London office, right to Paul Groves subpoena from the High Court. I filled it out um, and I sent him it, and I sent it recorded, and it's recorded as being delivered. Someone signed for it at YouTube headquarters in England, um, in London. Someone signed for it. And on the system now it says delivered, signed for. And it's just turned up. It's turned up through the letterbox today. How did it get here? It's got a Royal Mail um, sticker on it saying return to sender as if it was never delivered. How's it got here? How did it get here? If it's recorded as being delivered, a legal document, Sabina, it's like on, um, you know, with... Um, Whitney Webb, you know, when, you know, Google, people are trying to get, you know, Sabina a uh, Google and so forth, and they don't know where he lives, they can't find his house. Either someone's hacked the system and made the system look like it's been signed for when it hasn't, and it never was, and then they just delayed it for a month, um, knocked it around in the warehouse, uh, and then it's come back. But, yeah, I sent two letters um, only less than a week ago, and they weren't delivered in Dorset and they've already come back within three or four days. So why is that one to YouTube headquarters taking a month to come back? I, what I think it looks to me like that he's possibly looked at it, seen that, you know, it says it's about a legal matter on the front, you know, because I put, you know, I actually put that on that it's about a legal matter on it. And I think that he said, I don't want this letter. I don't want to be in receipt of it, but it's already been signed for. I think that he's just gone outside, um, you know, to a mailbox or, or a parcel box or a post box and just stuffed it inside. So then when the mailman comes to empty normal mail, um, he'll find this letter that, oh, what's this doing here? You know, it, it, and then they'll check on the system. Well, it says it's already been delivered, but it hasn't. Um, you know, um, we'll have to return it to the sender. I think that what he's done is he's kind of tried to get out of being in receipt of it. So then it, what it does is, if it's usually a court Sabina or something, usually you've got a limited time, but, you know, if it gets back undelivered, you might claim that it wasn't delivered, but it's been signed for, he signed for it. So 
I'm wondering if these corporate companies now are doing that. Because, you know, like this Sergey Brin, you know, and Google, you know, and the track, you can't even know what house he's at. If they can, you know, just not be in receipt of the letter, they don't have to prove that, you know, they received it. And then when they send it back to you. And what I've noticed is that all of the services on Royal Mail now are, are an absolute fortune, except the really cheapest one that say, you're, you're scum, you're second class, you're not worth anything. And all the other ones are precision or recorded. The one that's next day delivery, you can't even put it in a post box anymore. You've got to actually go to a post office or get the postman to come and get it um, and wait for them uh, the next day. And you will be waiting a long time if it's a Friday. So you can't, they've actually phased out the local post box. Those signed for ones now, I've realised that they're no good because the recipient, all he has to do is after the postman's delivered it, is go walk to a post box, put it in, and it gets delivered back um, to whoever sent it. So they can like rebound them. Unless you pay more, you're looking at paying six or seven pounds or more if you want it next day. Or want there is one where they take a photograph of it, like you know. But I think that's on parcels or on special delivery when you they actually take a photograph as well, not just a signature. Um, and then you know it'll be hard from you know if the poster gets a photograph of them receiving it, then you know it's, it's a bit more evidence. But at the moment, I think these big corporate companies who have got these in offices, they can even reject mail on Saturdays, or they, they can designate certain days where they won't they don't even have to receive it if they wanted to. Um, they could just, and it's funny because. I've actually now found some more addresses um, for Google UK. They've got four or five addresses, so I've sent one to every single one of their addresses. And one of the addresses is Handyside Street. What kind of Google address in London is Handyside Street? It's almost like to have, you know, a handy place in a side street where, you know, they can just have a bogus address where, you know, you know it's, people can't get in contact with them when they want to lay legal documents and then they can always have a handy side street to dump it in a mailbox to get it rebounded back to you. So there's loads of tricks that these big corporate entities are doing now. What I found now is that every absolutely everything is against you. Even the psychology of the answering phone messages, the language they use to say you're a registered charity, as if like, if you are a registered charity for tax, but you, you can't have a charity unless you're registered. When well, you can, you can still be a charitable body. Under the VAT law, um, you can still be a charitable body. They've been using this psychology to get most of the companies that they own and bought up to not even uh, uh, recognise you as a body unless you're, you're, you're a big body and, and you've got registered with government, but you'd have to be a big body. No, no. Rishi and his friends don't want any small entities to get any... Um, they don't want to do them any favours. They don't want any favours or give you a helping hand to any small charitable, educational, religious or political bodies. Unless you're a big charity getting a big handshake, cutting a big ribbon for labour or for the Tories with the, you know, with the cameras on you and then you're manding out bacon sandwiches, get the cameras, publicity stunt. If it's Rishi Sunak, if he's handing out bacon sandwiches, if all the spotlights are on him, you know, roll the drums and this is it. Oh, the champions. But all the normal people, you know, I mean, you know, giving money to Oxfam or doing favours for people down the road at a small level, you know, you're not even getting, they don't even want to recognise that you exist or you're worth anything unless you're doing community service, you know, at um, Salvation Army and then, you know, you, you can get um, your hours knocked off your community service. This is the thing. Now, going back to that Robert F. Kennedy interview, that Robert F. Kennedy interview, from what I heard of it, has literally, it, 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 that has just literally um fragmented the entire thing you know like when something breaks but then there's just like on a cartoon or in the movie it just you know it, it's it's gone but it just pauses in midair before it just crumbles to dust what robert F. kennedy just revealed with that woman in that interview is the absolute evil um lack of human um spirit of human beings 
you know, it's, you might as well have a number stamped on the side of your head uh, and have others that they squeeze through a machine and, you know, run you through, like, you might as well be a lab rat. They've effectively reduced human spiritual beings to essentially lab rats um, in their business franchise. And if the lab rat doesn't behave uh, and do what he's told, um, they push a button and it just, you know, gets electric shock or, you know, it's gone, incinerated, you know, just, it's completely incinerated. They're treating these families, these women, uh, as literally as um, animals, literally as animals, these corporate vampiric evil entities and you know all the tax breaks and the tax laws and this is the thing politically we've got we've had no chance to remove them because they've just been kicking the football between you know you know team one and team two and all the time they've been um fleecing our knowledge and then the alertness and um, understanding you need to know the tax laws when not being, being misled by their general guidance. And then they take ownership of Royal Mail and then they change all the messaging services and they're misleading you. And the rest of it, they're misleading. And all of the psychology, except all the ex throw all the accept cookies thing in there. Then there's, oh, I'm not a robot, but what you have to do when you say I'm not a robot, tick a box. But, you know, you know, robots comply, robots obey, robots do exactly what they're told, and robots don't have any rights. And when you tick the box, I am not a robot, you might as well be, because you're not a human anymore. You're not a human spirit with a soul you are effectively a number on an account. And I think this is what the, you know, once you agree to these corporate company policies, you are giving up your soul to, this, to the depths, flames of hell because you have no rights. You know, you haven't even got a legal statement. I mean, you, you, you haven't even got your own legal representation. They even take that from you. You know, it's an amazing, it's amazing you've got a defense. It, 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 it what they're actually, where they're going with this is a uh, hamster wheel factory, uh, a lab rat um, model of humans. And these people are absolutely rolling in the cash. They're not just rich. They're not filthy rich. It is, you know, Charles, beyond leaders, it is... The amount of money they have is beyond the imagination of anyone who who would. And then, you know, what the political parties who they've got installed in the councils do when you've got a, even, even a doctor in law, even Tess Lowry, a doctorate in law, an academic woman, a high-ranking academic of a expert scientific field, she can't even... She's getting told to take a, a banner down from over the M32 by the council, take it down, right? She can't even get enough signatures to get these people voted out um, or to get petitions to compel them to do things because they're telling her to take the message down, um, you know, take it down. Yet these people, Rishi Sunak, we sat there, right? What he's saying is, I'm now going to have to give the police some more powers, um, some more powers to protect our corporate interests and our corporate control and our corporate policies and you know and our assets. But where is the where where was Rishi Sunak when Bristol Council were taking down, you know? Um, Tesla Lowry's banner. She wouldn't need. They wouldn't. You wouldn't need any protests. You don't need any protests. All you need is, you know, you know, go on the website, sign a bit, sign a petition online. Done. You know, there's ten million signatures, right? You know, we compel you. This is it. Yet, what Rishi Sunak is keen on, you know, is getting into those meetings. I've, I've spoken to the police chief. It's perfectly safe to have Sunak International over the M621. It's 
It's perfectly safe. It's no distraction to driving. You know, I'm now Rishi Sunak. I'm going to put through this legislation um, with express um, urgency to get these digital advertising boards over the top of the M32 and over the M621. It's perfectly safe. It's perfectly... There's no distraction at all. Where's the police chief saying, do you think that's a good idea, Prime Minister? No. I didn't see one police chief saying, you know, um, you know, maybe it's a bit of a distraction to driving that. No, no, no. But as soon as... Oh, no, when it's... When it's... When it's Tesla or his banner, oh, take it down. Take it down. But when it's Rishi's... You know, Charity International registered political body extravaganza bacon sandwich giveaway. You know, who's the hero? Then it's in lights and flashing, you know, flashing, you know, you might as well have you know, a live movie. It's, it's safe, right? But, you know, if it's Tesla with a, a bit of cloth, who know? Even though in law, it's not liable for any danger or harm. Because it's a class F with the use of an enactment, which, which removes a liability through Schedule 2 for any damage or danger if it was removed or taken down or blown off. So, you know, that's law. What's the point of having a law if you're not going to use it? And I'm sure that a, you know, half a ton um, digital electronic advertising board is going to do a lot more damage um, if it falls off the top of the M32 than a bit of cloth. Um, even if it did go over someone's windscreen temporarily, um, if it's windy, it likely probably will go further than the motorway and end up in a field at some point or other. And, you know, you've got windscreen wipers. You know, I, I, I favour my chances of a banner temporarily blowing over the window. We get windscreen wipers on there. I'll wind the window down quick. You know, with Elon Musk's new lightning fast windows, if you can find the button, you know, someone's put the lock on. Oh, damn. You know, uh, oh, 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 where's the lock? I can't remember. You know, I don't know. I don't have to work this vehicle. You know, just, just, you know, wind the window down or just, you know, and pull it back in. You know, probably get done for that. You know, you know, but yeah, I favor my chances with a banner, Tesla is banner blowing across the front of the windscreen than um, a, you know, half a ton um, digital advertising thing you know falling off not that oh it's secure it's passed all the safety tests and procedures you know oh really you know this is it um have, has the food passed that you're advertising on there passed all the safety procedures well that's the thing that andrew bridgen asked the prime minister questions on andrew bridgen was asking the prime minister oh you know um you know, now's your chance answer the questions and out the bacon sandwiches you know the spotlights on here we go big question andrew bridgen ready ask rishi one two three have you? Do you think your businesses that you you know taking control of might be harming human health? Possibly, you know, never mind COVID. Well, I'll move the subject back to COVID, Mister Bridgen. We don't want to um, have too much attention on all the other health hazards that we've been causing um, in our strategic planning of planning permissions of drive-throughs, McDonald's, and the rest of it. Cancerous, um, diabetic um, companies that I've got shares in. No, we don't have to take distractions for that. You know, there's there's no damage from this advertising board over the M32 that's got constant, you know, Wimpy's Burger um, adverts on it. That's where I'm going on now. I'm off my way to go Wimpy through drive through you know, and then I'll be getting a fine for holding my mobile phone on three points, you know, looking at the Wimpy. I don't know which Wimpy advert to look at. The Wimpy advert on my phone or the Wimpy advert over the M32 or the Wimpy advert that um, when Rishi Sadak's giving out a Wimpy Burger. This is the thing, right? But now it's, oh... Oh dear, in Mashara Maharaja has spoken. Oh dear, now we're in trouble. French farmers are pouring, um, you know, wagons of horse manure all over the European Parliament, and now we might even be about to prove that. Oh, actually, we've got pretty much the same rights in the UK as well. You know, oh, 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 you know. Better give the police some more powers. It'd be all right if they had to give us some powers so we didn't have to agree to these criminal, um, manipulative, oppressing and inhuman policies that cannot be legal. They cannot be legal. Rob F. Kennedy Jr. has said that, you know, that they're effectively illegal, these policies, particularly in America. And this is the thing. Uh, I, it's a combination of things. Don't down, downplay that program because that episode, that interview has, 
you know, rocked Black Rock. He, 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 he's, he's effectively, what Robert F. Kennedy has effectively done is like, you know, when you've got, you know, a lot of items on a table covered up, he's literally pulled the, um, you know, the, the silk cloth off the table cover to reveal everything. Um, it, it is nothing less than calculated, planned, and strategically um, organized um, subversion of liberties of the realm. And it's done in a way where they make you cons all the way along consent, accept, submit, agree. So they lead you to believe that you've got no rights. But you must, they can't because they're not actually allowed to take the rights away. And we know that on YouTube because half of these things are powered through Standing in Orders 145A of the Petitions Committee and several acts of law. Um, and, and, you know, we had Royal Mail that was meant to be partly public owned and it, it served a democratic function. Even MPs now are claiming money back from Royal Mail through Parliament for the elections. But, you know, we're not claiming anything back and, you know, you get 5% of the mayor vote, then you can get your deposit back. But, you know, you know these elections are meant to be free. You know, they've got all these clerk positions. Uh, there's a lot of law to do with even clerks of the peace and so forth. Not being meant to accept money for positions. Uh, you know, not not there's not meant to be money changing hands or people getting paid off or getting nice bonuses for um, getting set up in nice positions and so forth. You know, it's partly to do with the French farmers, and then. I made a legal representation to the Judicial Conduct Investigations Office, which I think is very valid and very serious about our rights, where we've got a lot of very serious legal cases that have been, I think, unlawful in the lower courts that shouldn't have ever been in there, you know. And, you know, there's strange things happening. The The gentleman whose case it was, he's, he's listing mysteriously disappeared and his solicitor wasn't expecting it to disappear there's a lot of people funding that case because it's publicly funded because they're all petitioners who are funding it his, his case just vanished from the listings at Bromley Magistrate and then um, uh, there's a police chief officer listed in there and then on the 9th, there's a superintendent. And then, you know, uh, there's the oh, then there's this ooh, fake terrorist, a um, little bit of theatre. Someone hacked into the um, substation next to the old Bailey, uh, however they've done it. We don't know how they've done it, but it, it's not coincidence. It is not coincidence. There's no way it's coincidence. It's perfectly timed with that, um, that Stop Euless case. And... The, the name vanishing from the listings and, you know, all the barristers are booted out onto the streets and made an example of, you know, and so forth. And, oh, it's terrorism. No, no, it, th this has got to be, you know, the old briefcase on the motorway trick, you know, that they used to claim that they were IIRA, but really it was, you know, to um, make hatred it have have you know um, instilled distrust in the Irish and you know not meant you it's too scared to go over there and go to the ancient sites and learn about the heritage and history history and heritage you know these are the terrorism tricks of England I I I think that the burning down of the House of Parliament you know was one of the examples of these they've been going on the whole time it wouldn't surprise me you know if um, if Bedford um, wasn't poisoned. I think I think Bedford was I actually think that I think Lord Bedford was poisoned by the king uh in the just prior to the civil war because he was a fierce opponent of the king in the short parliament and then just before they went into the civil war he mysteriously got ill I think he was contaminated on purpose with, um, I don't know if it was smallpox or whatever it was, and he got really ill and died. If you've got hospitals with people who have got that disease and you can get, you know, a swab or 
a, a bit of clothing or something like that uh people you know you you know where people who have got these diseases are and where they're in abundance you know in hospitals or in um you know certain um you know buildings where they're treating people you could just go get some stuff and have you know millet in the winter put it in someone's house i strongly believe in my opinion i think um bedford was poisoned um and i also it, it, john pym is meant to be one of the most prominent parliamentarians he he secured the release of um baswick and um henry burton um who had both had their ears chopped off for you know having different religious opinions um john pym was you know highly regarded in you know the long parliament for implementing all all the modern tax um, legislation and so forth but he didn't really last that long in the civil war he also mysteriously got ill as well um he was a key figure i think that they, they, they were poisoning them i think that it's a uh, milady de winter style thing i think that you know that was of parliament you know the, the whole thing i think that the cop the 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 the, the aristocrats the aristocracy are the terrorists and once they got the police, this big body of organised men, that's when I really think it hit home. And then they could up their antics more than sieging castles and, um, you know, um, going around the Doomsday Book, taking account of everyone. You know, that's, you know, Doomsday Book, you know, you want to know everything. We want to know what everyone's got. You know, this is almost like what they're doing now. This is worse than the Doomsday Book, what these people are doing. I believe that the Houses of Parliament getting burned down was a terrorist attack and set up by the state by the aristocrats, you know, possibly by even the king, um, to to scare the ministers, to, to scare the 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 commons, you know, to, to to keep them, you know, scared. And I think a lot of these, because who else is organised? You know, I've seen what these groups are doing in Facebook, and they're they're barely getting organised. I mean, whatever they're doing now on the streets in protesting is at best, um, you know, flimsy. You know, even in America, we've stopped Cop City. You need people with technology, listening devices, established networks, phone networks, you know, electricity networks, all these things. Then there can be power cuts. It's not us. It isn't us. We've never had that capacity. It's the government. They are the organised ones. They are the ones who are not, you know, at work all day um, under employment. They're the ones who are keeping people in employment, keeping them busy, keeping them distracted, and keeping their head down, organising them all while they're going in between the walls um, in their business meetings and in their executive Mondeo um, timeout sessions, you know, nipping, nipping about in between. Um, I think that it is the state, and I think that it is a very, very, very old, long-established, um, you know, tradition they've got of terrorising us. Because, you know, they've got where they are now through us obedience you know you don't end up with trillions you know no one if there ever was a threat to them and if they ever you know it, 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 they simply that there is no need for any change in rights or law that sunak can conjure up because he's quite comfortably quite easily and quite successfully Got his bank account in um, at gross excess. Got everyone at the workplace tight to the bench for eight hours a day. And, you know, he's controlling all the machines, all the mobile phone companies, the television, the newspapers. He's having a laugh. He, he, he's having a laugh. Things are not quite going exactly how he wants them now. And people are doing like in france which literally is you know it's basically just you know not doing as they're told for once and now he's you know the ghost who walks calls forth the power of ten tigers you know he sat there like maharaja in temple of doom just like you know you move your hand in front of his eyes he's just staring forward into space you know um oh 
I'm going to have to lift, I'm going to have to take away more rights from you now, aren't I, Mr. Dibbles? Yes, you are. It's like in Red Dwarf, isn't it, you know, with Mr. Dibbles behind the screen in quarantine, you know, I think that you're going to have to have three hours. W-O-O, what's that? Without... Oxygen! Isn't that right, Mr. Chief Commissioner? Yes, Mr. Prime Minister. I think we're going to have to give them 17 years without oxygen, aren't we, Mr. Dibbles, Mr. Chief Commissioner? Yes, we are. He's gone! He's like Rimmer. He's gone! He's like Rimmer in that quarantine now, Sunak, in this. Sat there. He's, he literally is... It's gone. He just like you know the um, farmer protest in France, the Robert F Kennedy interview with that woman, which has literally pulled the complete um, cover off the whole thing. The, the pure, you know, this is like you know, you know, it's literally like you know, you know, get get the gargoyles out. You know, this is evil. To, to mankind, you know, and it's just a, sp there's a spirit left there, you know, there's do, it's just like, just, you know, it's just a shell, you know, I think we're going to have to um, give them 17 hours without oxygen, aren't we, Mr. Dibbles? You know, this is it, this is what we've come to, you know, it, it, the entire thing is absolutely corrupt how they've obtained it, how they've kept us busy with the cinemas, eating the donuts and the popcorn, the, the, the whole thing. And then there's Tucker Carlson sat there with Putin, you know, um, you know, Putin's, you know, complaining and grumbling that, you know, he wants to make peace, but no one else does or whatever, you know, it, it, it's corrupt. And I know that we've been stripped mind all the rights that we've had the advice the guidance has all been um purposely dumbed down while his brains have been dumbed down we wouldn't need all these political actions if we'd have you know been able to put the banners up on the motorway being able to have the petitions running for longer than six months being able to you know even when you do collect four hundred thousand signatures then okay then can we have this referendum nope you know this is it it, it, it's pure. It's it it's Oxford schoolboy defiance of the people, and then it, it spins the blame on us when we're about you know what organisation have we got? Um, this is you know ramshackle shambles organisation. They're the one with the precision machinery, the tech, the 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 the, the framework in place. You know, it's and now they're getting a bit of um, you know farmers mud splattered on the windows that are insured. Um, you know, it's I you know oh so then Mister Dibble they want to get the manure out on the tractors, do they? You know, this is it quarantine. Oh, you will have to quarantine their rights, won't we? You know, we'll actually no. I'm sorry, but you can't do that. You know, this is the thing. That's what YouTube's doing with with, with a you know quarantine. You know, oh, he's broken our policy, is he? You know, oh, Mister Dibble, he's broken our policy, Chief Commissioner. Well, then, we'll have to take his channel down and give him five years without his legal documents, won't we, Mr. Dibbles? Well, I need my legal documents to go to court. Not in this quarantine, you don't. You know, you won't be going to court because, Mr. Dibbles, we'll have to quarantine his money as well, like those, um, you know, Canadian truckers over in Canada. We'll have to quarantine his money as well. And Russell Brand, you know, take his money off him. Take Russell Brand's money off him. You, I'm sorry, Mr. Brand, you won't be going to court with without money. Yes, Mr. Dibbles, Mr. Chief Commissioner. And what we're going to have to do with that money that we've put in the safe is buy more tasers. 
you know, buy more police truncheons and, you know, um, handcuffs. This is the thing. While, you know, we, now they're banning, you know, blades, you know, no blades, no bows. What about people who've been, you know, using mail order from the Yellow Pages for the last 10 years, you know? What about um, Keir Starmer's tool-making dad out in some village in, um, you know, Ipswich or somewhere? Um, you know, I've, I've been getting tools mail order since I was, you know, since 1964, you know? He's been using getting the Yellow Pages or on the, on the old dog and burn on the telephone. You know, can I have some more craft knives, please? And I'm sorry, we can't do that anymore. Well, uh, why not? You know, she's using the old, the old dog and burn, the old telephone. You know, no, no, no. But uh, I don't. Uh, there is nowhere to go around here. I can't buy any um, tools. I have to get to the DIY shop, but there isn't a DIY shop for miles. You know, and now they've got getting fifteen minute cities in them paper mile. You know, paper mile to go for a craft knife. You know, I, I, it's like on um, you know Golden Child. I, 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 I want the knife, please. Through post, you know, but the things are going missing in the post at the moment. I've had letters returned and undelivered, you know, it, it's insanely ridiculous. I, I think that I don't think they want us to have any, it's part of this, you'll have nothing and be happy, but starting with, you know, anything that you could possibly use to defend yourself with, um, you know, um, and also control of vehicles. It, it By the time they finish with us, we are going to be some sort of gizmo or something, uh, um, you know, like from Gremlins, and, you know, you ain't even going to be able to make any Gremlins if you get wet. You know, that would be something. You're just going to make nothing, you know, um, candy floss. You know, it, it, they're trying, they, they want to, we're being treated like dogs and it not, you know, and it ain't going to be a whippy. It's going to be some kind of weird chihuahua way weird, you know, yes sir, no sir, three bags full sir, chihuahua -y thing with no rights, and then you wouldn't, they'll find some use out of us with some genetic experiment, you know, after we've completely lost all will completely, and the robots are doing everything, you know, they'll find some use for us, possibly some sitters on the shoulder, like some kind of um, familiar or something, you know, um, reduced to some kind of um, odd familiar genetic creature that has no use you know it, 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 there's no equality you know if sunak so what sunak needs to do is sit there and say well this is an interesting situation everyone isn't it well well mr dibble mr police commissioner uh, we're going to have to give everyone their money back, aren't we? Yes, Mr. Dibbles, yes, we are. I'm going to have to put some new emergency legislation through that make all these policies on these private corporate platforms illegal. So we can't hold you to any unlawful commitments. And so you've got your rights. And so you can put your banners over the M32. And so you can get things made for, you know, without having to pay tax on your charitable items or political materials. So you can vote me out. Aren't we, Mr. Dibbles, Mr. Police Commissioner? We're going to have to make it very easy for them to vote me out if they're not happy with the way it's going. Aren't we, Mr. Dibbles, Mr. Police Commissioner? Yes, we are, is she? Yes we are why don't we have a fair and open process for the mayor you can just write down who you want without having to put a ten thousand pound deposit down you know let them battle it out on top of the pops you know seeing that everyone's got their own youtube channel now you know having well, i'll have to put some emergency legislation through to make the youtube algorithm equal and fair for everyone no favorites around here is there mr dribble no mr prime minister no favorites around here you know, not in this political party. This is it. We, 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 you know, the things that need to be done are not being done. And and I actually think that this Prime Minister's um, statement comes from not just, the, you know, what's happening in France, which is, you know, 100 times worse than what's happening over here, if if, if hardly anything, except in London. But it, it that, don't underestimate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. because... I think that, um, you know, regardless of anything that I could say, that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. interview from yesterday, I was like, wow, this is like, you know, he's really, you know, he's really kind of 
calling out, um, well, Sunak. I think that Sunak's this this you know doo, this flatlining calm thing, this kind of like your know, Maharaja spirit possession, um, you know, this kind of like um, you know, it, it, it's it's literally. I think that Robert F. Kennedy interview has really shaken Sunak. And I don't think there's anything to do with the fact that we've really got a strong argument for the rights claims and that could potentially be, you know, panicking about what people are going to do. Well, you know, you know, they, they, they've been doing it in France for the last, you know, month and they're still at it. You know, it can't be that bad. Um, I think it, I think Sunak is overplaying the protesting part of it, given to the fact that I, I even think that Pretty Patel's legislation is misleading and, you know, not really applicable... Um, to petition in any way because it didn't even invoke it, you know. It, it, I, I think that, I think Sunak, I really think that Robert F. Kennedy um, interview has upset and hurt Sunak. Um, it, it is, it is effectively, uh, indirectly accusing Sunak, basically, and his wife and their, their friends and colleagues and all their investment friends around the globe um basically that what they're doing is very very evil and bad to normal people the type of people that they were claiming they were protecting from covid by the regulations the type of people that they're claiming that they are helping want to educate um be our new academics innovation technology students and graduates of technology and you know the sciences when as long as it's under their regime as long as they consent submit accept to their policies and rules you know and you know sign on the line you know you're meant to have rights when you have the right to petition but you know it's almost like the red pill and the blue pill you know and the matrix you know or like in you know eat from one fruit in like in the um, bible you know eat from one fruit you know and then you eat from the other fruit it's almost like if you sign this bit of paper that Rishi's got, rather than have your rights and immunities and freedoms of liberty to challenge and beat these people, it's almost, it's a bit like the two fruits, isn't it? You know, eat for all oh, one side of the mushroom makes you grow bigger and the other side of the mushroom makes you grow smaller. It's like, you know, you know, Rishi gets on his desk, he gets out this, you know, company policy, oh, you know, sign here, I'm not a robot, tick here, ding, you are now, you know, this is it. If you sign this man's contract, if you sign this policy, YouTube policy, then you, 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 it's like, it's almost like, you know, when you go to get the other document out, the pen, uh, you've got no rights, <laughs> You can't pursue it, and you can't even advertise it or promote it or anything. Uh, and then, then you got to wear some over your mask so you can't speak properly. Uh, you're, what they've got is it's almost like their contract is almost like um, the contract with the devil because you're what they're doing is it's like the anti petition, isn't it? Well, I've just realized this now, it's like the anti petition. You know, it's like one side of the mushroom makes you grow bigger, the other side makes you grow smaller. It's like if you sign this document, it makes you grow smaller. But then if you get out the right to petition, it makes you grow bigger, particularly when you get more people to sign it. But if you sign Rishi Sunak's petition, then you can't do anything because, you know, he shuts your channel down and um, takes your legal representation off you and your money. So you can't even take him to court. You know, that's effectively what it is, these contracts. I think they're illegal. And I, I, I know Robert F. Kennedy Jr. will probably claim that there's all the complicated, intricate American laws, but I don't think you need those. There's something fundamental about it in eggs in in the in the enactments that haven't been amended. You know, the Seventh Amendment. You know, the Fifth Amendment, the Sixth Amendment, the Seventh Amendment. No, f forget that. In the amendments that you know, in the law that hasn't been amended, that is still in effect, unchanged. It's just illegal. I mean, the, the law on um, you know, deponing people from, you know, forcing them into, you know, confessions um, for promises of, you know, reduced punishments, that's illegal. Yet they're doing it with the 
speeding fines. They're getting you to confess, admit that you're the driver, um, and even consent to accepting the fine without going to court, and even without just 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 admit, you know, just basically, and we know you'll you know. Uh, you admit you did you did it, um, and you know we'll just give you a, a nice little fine, and you won't have to go to court, you know. And then in fact, you know, and if you don't pay that fine, it'll go up, you know. Pay now, pay within ten days, and I promise you, it won't go up. This is it. What 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 they're doing is illegal in fundamental basic statute law. The police, um. And then how they've managed to pull all this off is by scrapping the juries in the civil courts because none of the none of the people would put up with this, you know. Husbands splitting up with wives, claiming ten million pounds from divorces. You know what are these pumping out? What are these pumping in calls playing at? You know, you, you, you can't have a. Um, jury in a civil court with these idiots knocking around with their golf bags and their, you know, um, lover's tips over a bottle of wine and, uh, you know, they're, they're juggling, you know, millions of pounds, you know, and, you know, the public won't put up with it. And then, you know, they won't even put up with these policies after these policies. They rule they were unlawful, like, you know, um, what they're doing to us with YouTube. It's criminal. It's a, it, 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 it th there is law in place. It's against the fundamental freedoms and liberties. They are getting you to sign. They're refusing business unless you sign your rights away. In many instances, and that's illegal. It is illegal because they're, say, they're refusing to provide the service and saying you can't have a service unless you sign the contract and accept the terms and conditions, which... Isn't that, um, that's discrimination, surely, surely that's a form of discrimination, you know, whether you're a man, woman, you know, Muslim, Sikh, or whatever religion you are, because they're, they're, what they're doing is, how is that not against trading standards or consumer rights? There is no consumer right when they make you sign to a policy that gives up your rights, particularly on YouTube, when the, um, the Petitions Committee are giving directions to share and advertise your petitions on YouTube, Facebook and Google, and YouTube provides an electronic form of mail, an electronic form of messages. I can message Robert F. Kennedy through YouTube. I can send him a message through YouTube. That's an electronic form of mail, and it complies with all the definitions of an electronic form of mail in the law, right? And that's illegal because Parliament are um, supplementing... Um, Parliament have made an order that you will share the petitions on those platforms through Standing Orders 145A, and then they're subpoenaing the advertisements to the public um, so they can see them and read them um, and come forward with witness statements that they support the cause. And YouTube can't sign that away. That's against, what is a consumer right? Well, you're a consumer and you've got rights, but what are the consumer rights? Well, they're, they're, they're in the law. They're in the Bill of Rights. So your consumer rights are your political rights as well. So how, how, is, how is the policy not illegal? How is it not? It's like, you know, it's like, you know, he, he's making you bite one apple, right? So then then when you've bitten it, then he's like saying, now you don't have the right to bite the other apple, which will heal you and make you better. It's nearly as bad as selling you, you know, cancerous hot dogs or something that are all burned and then you get cancer and then he goes, oh, look, I've got the, the solution here. No, 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 but that'll cost you sixty nine ninety nine now. Well, I thought it was free. Well, it wasn't until you signed my contract, and now you'll have to pay. And by the way, I'm seizing your money off you and putting it in my safe, so you won't be able to pay, you know, because in that contract you just signed, um, it gives me the right to, you know, seize all your things, including your legal argument as well, you know. <laughs> this is the thing. It, it, this is where they're going with all this. Well, they're already on with it now, but they're, they're, this is the direction they're wanting to continue to pursue. We can't continue with this 
with these type of policies. And I know that, at least on TuneCore, they've got impossible policies, some of them. Some of the policies are impossible to exist because it says on the TuneCore policy, and this goes for many other sites as well, the TuneCore policy is the most ridiculous policy ever conceived of. It's like on the Princess Bride, you know, with, um, you know, um, the guy that he's actually, funnily, funnily enough, that's when he's sat at the table and they're doing the little um, poison trick, you know, but he's made himself immune to the poison so it doesn't affect him, you know. Um, what's he called? Vicini or whatever. The Vicini guy, you know, when he's like, the Vicini guy is meant to be the intelligent guy, you know, preposterous. He's a Vicini, in preposterous. This is it. On TuneCore, the policy they claim is that they can they can um, remove your account for any any reason at all. It says the word any any reason or no reason. That means that they are claiming that in their policy. If they wanted to remove you for being Asian, they could. Because that's a reason, any of them. They can have any reason. It could be any, absolutely any reason they're saying any. So that means that if it's a, absolutely any reason, that means that they can remove you for being Asian because that's just a, a, any reason, one of the reasons. But that's illegal because it's racist and it's against the um, d racial discrimination law. And this is where these big companies are going. It, if if that tune car policy was the policy they had for who's prime minister, right? That would mean that the public could remove the prime minister for any reason or no reason including the f if, if we think the reason is that he's an Asian, that he's a Pakistani descent. That means that we would be claiming in our policy that we would have a lawful right in our policy to remove the Prime Minister for being a Pakistani. So how does that work when it's illegal? You can't have that policy. And I challenge Robert F. Kennedy Jr. You can't have that policy. It is illegal and racist. But yet, yeah, we're the ones who are getting... They're, they're the ones who are enacting all these laws for racism. But yet, yeah, when he goes into the business office and he's doing his handshake deals and he's making profits, they're writing these policies. And these are the policies they're strategizing on. So, and this is the thing. They're claiming that we're the bad people yet they're going to make him policies that defy not only law and logic, but their own racism that they're claiming. They're defying their own racism in their own corporate policies, which that is um, absolutely insane. And I, I'm using that word. It, 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 that is, you, you, you've got to be prosecuted for that. I mean, you, you can't not be prosecuted for that. It's an illegal policy that can't possibly exist. And, and, and these are the policies that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is... These are just some of the policies that he's talking about that type of thing with that lady um, in his interview the other day. And that's the tip of the iceberg. But Robert F. Kennedy was saying, you know, he thinks it's illegal what they're doing, but it's hard to prove. How is it hard to prove that? I mean, that policy speaks for itself. Um, this is the thing. So, unless they're claiming that they're using political rights, but I can guarantee you that that company's, um, you know, presenting itself as a music platform.